Good morning. It's a chilly Tuesday. You might hear a little heater in the background. You know, I've got my little house on the prairie, uh, nightgown uh, slash bathrobe on. Because when I get cold, whew, it is not a good day in the neighborhood. But praise be to God, we live to see another day. And this is Tuesday, October 8th. So I'm going to read out of uh, the book of James, uh, chapter 5. So I'm going to read it into its entirety. Now listen, you rich people. Weep and well because of the misery that is coming on you. Your wealth is rotted and moths have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourselves in the days of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the innocent one who was not opposing you. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, nor by heaven or earth or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Otherwise, you will be condemned. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth, and someone should bring that person back, remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. And that's James uh, fifth chapter, and I read it to its entirety, verses 1 through 20. And that was good. It, it, it causes a multitude of, of, of events and perhaps things that we, some of us or all of us are going through. When we look at the government and the, shut stand, the shutdowns, um, there, there's no way to fathom that it, it would, would come to this. But read the word for yourself. Uh, the Bible is is the roadmap to, to for history repeating itself and all the things that are going on. It also talked about rich people, and don't worry, I'm not picking at the wealthy by any means, because I consider all of us wealthy if we know the Lord. If we are His and we know we are His, we're the we're the richest ones ever. But I'm talking about people who do hoard up wealth and and keep it to themselves, and uh, because they don't want to help others, that's that's not a good thing. What is the profit of man to gain the world and lose his soul? That's, that's a direct quote from the Bible. Uh, I want to give shout-ins and shout-outs to people out there who are helping one another. You know, if you got food stamps and you helping other people get food, that's a blessing. If you have money and you're giving others money to help with their bills, that's a blessing. And all those things ha have happened in my life and in my children and my grandchildren's lives. There are some good people out there helping us to try to make it so we can stay together as a family. And I just want to thank you. I'm not going to embarrass you and call out your name all the time, but I will say the Jets and the Clarks and the Duncans and, and, and Nadines and, 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 and the Sharons. and It's, it's amazing. It, it really isn't. And God bless you all and keep you. And another thing, we have to remind our children that, that they're not poor. You know, you got to tell them how rich they are in spirit. I know that they're under a lot of peer pressure sometimes. They go to school and they, they may see their classmates with things that, they don't have it home, but you have to remind them, you know, that they have to start looking on the inside of people and not what's on the outside of them. You know, not the clothes that they wear the, or the nice shoes or even the bling, but look at their spirit, at their soul. Dig deeper if you can. It's just like I was talking about in one of my videos about giving people chances. 
you know, I don't know where I'd be if God didn't give me a chance. Well, y'all know exactly where I'd be, you know, in the fiery furnace. And I'm glad I'm not. You know, I can relate to I can relate to people who abuse drugs. I can relate to people who sell drugs. I can relate to people who drink. I can relate to people who quit drinking. I can relate to people who smoked a little marijuana and quit smoking a little marijuana. You know, I look at the Ten Commandments and guess what? I can go down the checklist right and left all day long. But I praise God for salvation and saving a wretch like me who I, I still feel unworthy. But I'm so glad that he loved me enough that Jesus Christ stretched out on that cross. You know, to save me with a multitude of sins. Every day I repent. And I thank God for bringing me as far as he has. And I don't know how much further I have to go, but I know what the end result's going to be. Because I know where I'm going. I have one option, and that's heaven. That's it. There are no other choices for me. And I encourage you, and I will keep praying for you. And you keep feeling that way, too. The option is heaven. That's it. Bottom line, all you can do is get promoted. Holler back if you know what I'm talking about. And have a blessed day. I love you, but God loves you more. And, and don't be hating on my little house in the prairie. You know, because I know I look good. I know I do. You can tell me if you want to.